Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be walking you through how to paint a seashell using watercolors and a technique known as loose watercolor. Before we get started, I just want to ask you guys to subscribe to my channel. I paint a lot of pictures just like this one and if you're interested in seeing more, hit the subscribe button down below. For a full list of everything you'll need to get started, also check out the video description below. So first things first, we're going to draw it out using a pencil and make sure to keep it nice and light. For this seashell, we're going to use a fairly basic shape. So we're going to have a wavy line at the top. We're just going to dive right into it here. And we're going to come down into a cone shape. And feel free to pause at any point if I go a little fast. It allows you just to catch right up again. These lines don't have to be perfect. If there's any you don't like, you can erase or simply go over in a different way with your watercolor. So we're just getting, making sort of a crown at the top, getting smaller and smaller and keep it nice and light. I'm drawing a little bit dark than I would even suggest you draw just so that you can see it on the video, but you wanna keep it super light with watercolors just because all these lines are gonna show through at the end. Then we're going to draw the outside of the shell. Most of these types of shells kind of wrap around. And I'll probably change the line a little bit when I'm actually painting, but this is just a loose idea of how I want it to look. Now I'm going to lighten it a little bit. Just some of these lines here are a little bit dark. You can use your white eraser to lift some of those pencil lines off just to make sure they're not too dark. And that's about how you'd want it to look right before you add the color. So for brushes, I'm going to start with my dagger brush. If you have a round brush, that works as well. Like I mentioned before, I have a list of all the supplies I like to use in the video description, but you are welcome to use whatever you have on hand. So we're going to start with some blues and purples for this guy. So we're going to put down some clear water here and I'm going to use my brush to fill in all the way to the edge with clear water. And then what I'm gonna do is use some blue. I have a Prussian blue, but whatever blue you have on, on hand is fine. And I'm gonna drop some blue in right here. And you wanna just add a little bit more to darken it because we're gonna have this be the darkest part of the seashell. And if you've added enough water, it should bleed out just like mine is. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rinse off my brush. And this is where I'm going to grab some of that purple. And I'm going to just follow the perimeter. Now, this is where I'm able to kind of add a jagged edge on this seashell. And I'm using different pressures on the brush to add a very uneven edge. And I'm wanting the edge to be quite dark, so that's why you'll notice I have quite a bit of pigment there. And then just for a little bit of fun, I'm going to take some pink, and I'm just going to drop in a little bit of pink here too. We're going to make this seashell fairly rainbow. Now this is setting up here, it's drawing. This is a good time to go in and darken that blue a little bit. I find if you do it as it's almost dry, that's a good time. So we're just going to add a little bit more blue right here. Add a bit more contrast and shadow where the seashell would be naturally opening. Now, because this is all still wet, we're not actually going to be able to go into the body of the seashell now, but we can actually go and make our way up here. One way to get around that is to leave a thin white line between these two, but for today, today's demonstration, I'm just going to go ahead and make my way up to the top. So I'm going to go ahead and add the clear water just like I did before on this layer here. And then I'm going to take the blue and just like before, right near where it's popping out of the seashell, I'm gonna add the darker blue. And then I'm gonna take a bit of purple, about halfway through, fill that in. 
and it should just naturally bleed up. But I think this would be a good time to take a little bit of teal. I have teal if you have turquoise or whatever you have on hand. I'm just gonna add that in here. And just to keep it consistent, I'm gonna drop in a little bit over here before this dries. So next I'm going to add another layer while it's still wet. I'm going to come in and add another layer of dark blue right at the bottom. And I'm keeping this pigment very strong. So that means I don't have a lot of water. I have, I've really smushed the brush in the paints to get it nice and strong, the color. And then I'm going to take a lighter amount of the blue so I don't have very much on the brush and I'm just going to contour of the seashell. So that's all I want to do for that layer. Now I'm going to, with clear water, skip a line and actually move up to this one. And the reason I'm always skipping is because if I went straight to this one, I'd have to worry about getting this bleeding up. And this way, if I skip one, I don't have to worry about that. I like to do as much as I can without waiting for it to dry. So we're going to repeat the same thing we did before on this one. It's a little bit smaller. I'm going to actually use a clean brush to lift out a little bit of the water just so that it doesn't bleed too much. And then I'm going to take a bit of purple and add that on top. And then we'll make our way up to this one right here and do the same pattern, except this time I'm going to use my smaller brush. I have a liner brush here. Sometimes it just grabs a little less paint. Looks like it's not though in this case. <laughs> so we're going to just go back here with the liner brush and I'm going to darken this again. It's not absolutely necessary that you do this, but it's just kind of a nice then I'm going to take a little bit of pink and just drop that in here. If it's a little wet, that's okay. That's kind of what you want. Have some bleed, some not. And then what I want to do is I'm going to take my brush and some of this is still going to be wet. And if it's not, that's okay. You can all, I'll show you a technique for that. But I'm going to actually take water and massage it up to the seashell. So I'm going to do it down here as well. And this is just going to keep this painting nice and loose. I'm do it a little bit here. And if, if your painting has dried completely and it's not letting go like the way mine is, you can just massage it gently and some of the color should let go and start to bleed out. And if it's going really crazy, that means you probably have a little bit too much water. And what you can do is take a piece of paper towel and just lighten some of that up. We're just wanting to basically soften some of the edges. So right now is a good time to actually take a little bit of teal or blue or whatever you have and add some splatters over top of that. Now, if it looks like I'm jumping around a lot, it's because sometimes with loose watercolor, I do jump around quite a bit on the painting. You can always pause it and try and catch up. It's the beauty of learning these tutorials on YouTube. It allows you to pause it a lot if you need. All right, so I noticed I got one up here I didn't want, and then this, these pink spots, I like them, but they're just a touch dark. So I'm actually gonna dab a little bit of it up. Just like that. All right, so now is a good time to let it dry. Once you get to that point where you wanna do the body and it's still wet here, that's a good time to let it dry. I like to blow dry my paintings in between or you can just let it air dry. All right, so now that that first layer is dry, I'm gonna go ahead and add the second layer and butt it up to the first layer. So even if you have some splatters that are still wet, that's okay. Um, the key is to have the spots where you're gonna be butting up to be dry. So I'm going to fill in 
the main part of the seashell with clear water. I like to have a water tray that has two compartments in it or have two water glasses. That's because I like to make sure I always have clear water on hand. As your water gets dirtier, this is going to get more important. And I find sometimes when you're starting out, the water tends to get just a little bit murkier faster. All right, so now I'm going to take teal and I'm actually going to butt the teal up to this dark blue. I like the way the teal and the blue look together. It reminds me of sort of the waves, the water. We're going to keep this piece with a lot of blues. And then I'm going to take my dark blue and I'm going to come in with dark blue. And the dark blue is going to come over here. And I want to drop in a little bit more in this corner because I'm wanting this corner to be the darkest part. And I can actually lift my page up to allow it to make its way over. And I'm going to add a little bit of green in. Just for fun. Maybe a little bit down here. All right, so now it should be mostly filled in. I'm going to let it move around the page a little bit. And I'm okay with some of this white. As it dries, it probably will make its way in all the way, but I'm going to leave it for now as white. And then I'm just going to take that Prussian blue and just the tip of the brush and really define this line here. And I'm going to redefine this line as well. Now that teal is drying really fast, so you'll notice it's not actually bleeding in. But here it probably will. So wherever it's quite wet, the paint will just sort of get taken away. But where it's mostly dry, you'll notice it doesn't have as much of that effect. So now, because these are all dry, we can go in and add the in-betweens here. And uh, because they're so small, I'm just going to do them all at once. And I'm going to take a bit of purple and add the purple here. A bit of contrast. Just to make it a little interesting, I'll throw a little pink on top. Just make your way up the seashell, layer by layer. This one went a little bit dark, so I might have to come in and lift a bit of that out. Having a paper towel on hand and a clean brush can actually help with lifting a bit of color out when you add too much. It happens all the time. And then last but not least, the top. And then what I want to do is similar to what we did over here, we're going to take clear water and we're just going to go in and around and then every once in a while we'll just have it touch the painting. And same with up here, we can do that as well. Add some splatters on top. Now I like to do my splatters using one hand, but whatever's easier for you. I'm going to use a bit of green and then a bit of pink. I 
And these, some of these I find a little bit dark, so I might lift them out, but you kind of get the idea. You're just kind of feeling it out as you go. And you can always remove some if you find them to be too much. All right, so we're gonna let this dry and then we're gonna go in and just add a tiny bit more definition and that should be good. All right, so now that it's fully dry, we can use our liner brush. That's the small one you see here. And we can just define a few of the parts a little bit. So I'm just gonna go in and redefine this bottom a little bit, maybe just a tiny bit here. And I'm using a very light touch with this brush. Um, so that the lines aren't actually complete. So I'm actually letting it bounce off the page a bit, something that's a little hard to see on camera. But basically just allow your brush to actually get a little bit shaky. And in certain places, just redefine those edges. Not everywhere, just in a small amount of places. So I'm just redefining this edge. And along the top here. I'm going to help with some of these, but not all of them. Same with here. And then what I want to do is take a little bit of the poster paint. This is basically an opaque white paint. And some clean water. You always want to make sure your water is nice and clean when you're working with poster paint. And I'm just going to redefine a few of these lines. So using a very light hand, I'm going to go in and just separate a couple of them. Where it's not wet. And same within here, I'd like to have just a few little highlights here. And then we're going to add some lines. And then wherever I see some natural veining happening with the paint, I'm going to go in and just accentuate it. So I see some here, I'll accentuate that. And then maybe draw a little bit down here. And then last but not least, I like to do a few more splatters over top. All the other ones have dried, some have blended in, so having a few on top just adds a little bit more dimension. So using the Prussian blue, I'm just going to add a few up here and over here. It's easy to get a little carried away with the splatters. Just remember to add a few, take a look how they're feeling if they have nice balance. If you keep them fairly light, you can always add more, but it's harder to take them away. So last but not least, we'll sign it. And then you're all done. So if you enjoyed painting this video with me, I just ask that you give this video a thumbs up and be sure to hit the subscribe button if you want to do other videos just like this one. Thank you so much for watching.